Hello, I'm John Garvin, and welcome to another episode in my series on oil painting. Today, I'm going to be tackling another small landscape. You can see I've got the other painting completely done. It's already dry uh, and ready for me to go to work on it. I really like this composition. This is one of the, this is one a photograph that I took, um, and I always work from photographs. So I got it ready to go. Um, that I took along the Deschutes River. That you can't even hardly tell that this is literally in downtown Bend. It's like uh, five minutes from where I live and it's it's a, along the Deschutes River Trail. So it doesn't take very long on this trail to get kind of get back into the woods and you can almost forget that you're in any kind of a civilized area at all. So this composition really interested me because uh, just how how much detail there is in terms of the bushes, the branches, the grass, everything. So I think uh, it's gonna be an interesting challenge. I've painted trees before, obviously, and I've painted all sorts of underbrush. Um, I think this is probably the, the busiest painting I'm gonna try and consider it kind of a portrait of these ancient ponderosa trees. So let's get started. Lately, I've been using this very limited palette because I really like the way it harmonizes all of my colors. I've got cadmium yellow, alizarin crimson, French ultramarine blue, and titanium white. Here, I've mixed a bright warm color using lots of medium, which I'm gonna use for the sky. I decided at the start of this painting that I'm only going to use the photo as a guide, and I'm going to push the color as far as I can. The sky in the photo is almost pure white, but that's a limitation of my camera and not what I remember seeing. Then I mix a light green for the background, adding a little alizarin crimson so it has a nice golden hue. You can see how thin this layer of paint is by how the dried paint beneath still shows through. This is where an underpainting really helps. Without it, it would take many coats of color to achieve the same texture and vibrancy. Next, I mix a darker green and work on the mid-ground underbrush and shrubs. One of the things I really like about this composition is how areas of light and dark help divide the picture plane, really helping to give the scene a sense of depth. You can almost feel the sunlight pouring in beneath the trees as it lights up this grass, which is set off nicely by the shadows in the foreground. For the area beneath the trees, I mix a warm brown, which eventually will become a mass of needles and straw. Then I go to work on the trees. One of the reasons I picked this angle to the sun was so I could get this amazing side light on these ponderosas. The high contrast helps pull them into the foreground and when finished, they'll look almost three-dimensional. Then I start layering a dark brown into the shadow side, again, letting the structure of the underpainting show through. It will take a few coats of paint to get the contrast between the light and shadow areas just right. So this is just the beginning. Once I'm happy with the ponderosa trunks, I start working on the small branches and masses of needles. Using a double lot brush, the trick here is to get just the right amount of detail. Too little and it will look like blobs, too much and it just becomes noise. Then I go back to work on the foreground. This is where these adjacent areas of light and shadow really pay off, allowing these tall grasses to just pop off the background. I discover as I'm painting that the masses of color really don't need a lot of detail. Just a few blades of grass here and there is enough. Your mind will fill in the rest. After that, it's just a lot of finishing work. Adding detail to the trees, cleaning up edges on branches, adding more detail to the background shrubs, and fleshing out this small tree. And as usual, the last thing I add is my signature. And with that, this painting is done. I really like the way this one turned out because of the way I use the color glazes. This is a technique that's pretty different than what I normally do. Um, just a series of kind of really thin washes that give the overall uh, image a kind of painterly effect um, as opposed to photorealistic. I mean, it's still plenty realistic because that's the style I paint in, but uh, just the way the different colors sort of blend together in the background and you know the way the light and dark kind of like hits behind the trees and then hits this foreground area. It's not like the photo at all, honestly, uh, but that's okay because again, there's no point in recreating the photo because you've got the photo. So that's it for this episode. Um, thanks for watching. If you liked it, think about subscribing. Also leave a comment 
and I'll see you next time on Oil Painting with John Garvin.